So in math, when we, when we talk about the identity, uh, we mean a number that you can multiply or add with any other number and keep that original number the same. So for instance, uh, like when we say 7 times 1 equals 7, or we say 1 times 5 equals 5, or we say 3 times 1 equals 3, th these are all evidence that 1 is the identity. Because okay. it's a number that I can multiply with any other number and get the original number. So this lesson, the first part of this lesson is about the identity matrix, right? And so this identity matrix is going to be a matrix that has the property that if you multiply it by any other matrix, you're going to get the original matrix back. And so you can see that here. This, this statement here effectively says, if you multiply A times the inverse, you'll get back A. And even the other way around, if you do I times... A. If you do the identity times A, you'll still get back just A. Okay. So what does that identity look like? Well, uh, it's, it's a square matrix, and there's a different identity matrix for each square size. So the 2 by 2 identity matrix is 1, 0, 0, 1. Right. Um, the 3 by 3 identity matrix, well, first of all, it's larger. It's 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So basically, I mean, there's, there's a there's a four-dimensional, four-by-four uh, identity matrix, but I'm not going to write it down. You basically just have ones along the main diagonal, and you have zeros everywhere else, right? Ones along the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Um, just to sort of confirm this really quickly, let's, let's sort of take a look. If you were to do um, 3, negative 1, 5, 17 times the identity matrix, what do we expect that the answer would be? We should expect the answer is going to be 3, negative 1, 5, 17. Um, I would recommend you pause the video here and take, it's not going to take you longer than a minute, it goes really fast, multiply this out, practice your multiplication and make sure that you can do that and get that right. Um, so we know that a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2 is going to be another 2 by 2. So now if I multiply the first row by the first column, You'll notice you get 3 times 1, which is 3, and the negative 1 times 0 just gets blown away. Great, so that's 3. Then when I do the first row times the second column, 3 times 0 gives me 0. Negative 1 times 1 gives me negative 1. All right. For the last two, you've got 5 and 17 times 1 and 0, so only the 5 survives. And then finally, 5 and 17 times 0 and 1, and only the 17 makes it out. Notice that the answer that you get is the same thing as the original matrix that we started with. That's what the identity is supposed to do. Okay? So that's basically all I have to say about the identity. It's a special matrix. You need to know about it. Okay? So the rest of this lesson is going to be about inverses. right? So the inverse of a matrix A, which is notated as A with a little negative 1 power on it like this, is a special matrix such that when you multiply the inverse by the original function, you get back the identity. You can also do it the other way around. If we do the, the inverse on the left times A, you get back the identity. And it's important to note that both of these are true, because we mentioned in the previous lesson, multiplying matrices in a different order is not the same. In, in normal multiplication, 3 times 7 is equal to 21, which is the same thing as 7 times 3. Right? They're both 21. But in matrix multiplication, if you do A times B, it is usually not the same as B times A. And that, that's an important point. Right? But inverses are special. If you multiply an inverse by its own original matrix or the other way around, in both cases you'll get the identity back. Okay? Um, one other note about inverses before we do an example. Um, the, the inverse of a matrix only exists if the determinant of that matrix is not zero. So remember in the previous lesson where I said, oh, you know, eventually I'll tell you about what the determinant's important for. It's important for inverses. If the determinant is zero, the matrix does not have an inverse, and that thing is called a singular matrix. Um, sometimes on the IB exam, they'll ask you, like, oh, you know, is this a singular matrix? Which really just means check its determinant. If the determinant is zero, it's singular because it doesn't have an inverse. Okay? Um, so there's a formula for how we find the inverse of a matrix A, um, and, and here it is. If A is A, B, C, D, then the inverse of A 
is 1 over AD minus BC, which you guys should all recognize as the determinant, times. And then what you do is you switch the positions of D and A, and then you leave C and B where they are, but you change the sign of both of them. Okay? So, if anyone ever asks you to find the inverse, it basically means first, find the determinant, and make a fraction out of that. Then, change the locations and change the signs of all these. Like I said, switch the positions of A and D, and change the signs on B and C. Okay? So that's our formula. My first example here is to find the value of A such that the, such the following matrix is singular. In other words, has no inverse. All right, so remember, how do we do that? We do that by finding the determinant of this matrix. Right? The determinant of this matrix, 3, negative 2, 5A, is 3A plus 10. I suppose it's minus negative 10. So then I've got 3A plus 10 equals 0. If I move things around, I'll end up with A being negative 10 thirds. This is the one and only value of A, such that that matrix has no inverse and is singular. Okay, Really simple question. It's basically a determinant question, but it's also wrapped up in this idea of the inverse. Right? So if this number here were negative 10 thirds, this, inverse, this matrix has no inverse. And then my, so my last example. Um, so find the inverse of this matrix, then confirm that, okay, so th that's, that's the question. The question is, find the inverse of the matrix below. And then I want you to do a couple of other things. I want us to confirm that answer is correct by multiplying it together with this original matrix. And, and I'm going to sort of let you be on your own for that part. I, I want you to be aware of what that product should be. If I multiply a matrix by its own inverse, I should already know what the answer is going to be. Okay? So, first, what's the inverse of this matrix? Right? So, if this is A, what is A inverse? And again, I, I mean, it's just a formula. I'd recommend you pause the video and try that on your own. Um, so, here we go. For, first, what is the determinant? The determinant of A, we said that was the first step. We sort of do AD, that's negative 33, minus BC, which is negative 35, so the determinant seems to be 2, okay? So the inverse will be 1 over 2 times, and then inside I can move these things around, right? I'm supposed to switch the positions of A and D, and then I'm supposed to change the sign of B and C. Okay? You can either leave this as your inverse, like that, that answer will be correct on the exam, you can leave it like that, or you can distribute the negative one half in. Okay. Usually I leave it on the outside unless it's going to be pretty. Like if you're going to have fractions everywhere, which I'm about to have, um, I will usually leave it in this form. Um, but know that in all cases you're always allowed to, to either distribute it in or leave it outside. Okay. So that's the, that's the correct answer. But the point that I wanted to make is what happens if you take one of these matrices and multiply it with the original matrix, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the, the undistributed one first. Um, so what happens when I do, what happens when I do 3, 7, negative 5, negative 11, and multiply it with 1 half, negative 11, negative 7, 5, 3. Part of the reason that I chose to use this one is I wanted to show you what to do with that one half. Um, I, I don't want to distribute it in to, to this matrix here because we already know that has a lot of fractions. What I'd rather do is move the one half all the way to the front and I'm just going to deal with that later. I'm going to hope that multiplying these two matrices together gives me nice numbers, maybe even numbers, so that when I distribute it in it won't be so bad. Right? So again, I'm going to leave the one half off and just multiply these two things. Right? So I know that I'm going to get a 2 by 2 matrix out of that, so I'll sort of write that down. Um, so great, now when I do first row times first column, I'm getting negative 33 plus 35, which is 2. By the way, a lot of times this is how I'll sort of do my scratch work for this. 
I'll sort of over on the side set out what each of them should be. If you can be organized about that, it helps. Like you could sort of write equals two um, for the next one. When I do the first row times the second column, I'm going to end up with negative 21 plus 21, which is zero. Again, the reason I'm writing all that out there is I feel like if I um, if I write that down, there's there's more potential for partial credit if you make mistakes somewhere. So it's it's a good idea. Um, second row times first column. Let's see here, these two are going to give me 55 plus negative 55, which is again 0. And then the last one, I've got the second row times the second column, that's positive 35 minus 33, which is 2. Okay, And this is really awesome, because now when I distribute that one half into all of them, 1 half times 2 is 1, these are both going to be 0, and 1 half times 2 is 1, right? It's just what we expected, you know? Up above, we went through our little formula, and we found the inverse of these things, and then we should know that any time you multiply that inverse by the original matrix, you will, if you did your work right, you will always get this back. And this works as a great check that our inverse was correct, okay? Um... In the next video, I'm going to go through what we use inverses for, like how we, I mean, you know, of course you use them to get to the identity, but 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 how do we actually use that? What do we do with it? Okay, so we'll, we'll see that in the next video.